What up YouTube, it is time for the Dimensions and Entropy Tier 16 guide for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. This tier is releasing alongside Kefka's LD and Burst. Before we get started, I would like to ask you to like the video, share it on Reddit, Facebook, Discord, Twitter, you name it. Uh, comment with your planned team for this tier once it's all done. I'll be interacting with all the comments, so feel free to ask away anything you'd like. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. I am hilariously close to a thousand subscribers, and I hope this video will push me over that. I play both versions of Opera Omnia, JP, and Global, and I upload both and offer uh, auxiliary commentary, like my very serious tier list, which you can find in the card linked right here. Please check it out. It's pretty good and funny. And I do these guides monthly, along with other work with the Tonberry Troop. Lastly, if you need some other assistance on different tiers, I will be linking a card that has my playlist of other guide videos. Please check those out. This video will be split into parts for ease of navigation. I will be going over the stage theme, the recommended roles, a wave breakdown, top units for this tier, and then I'll conclude. Stage theme. Tier 16 is immune to target lock, aka taunt. Bosses in this wave can dish out powerful HP attacks, and there are five waves. Although there are some miscellaneous element type resistances and or weaknesses, there are no weapon type resistances, so really feel free to bring whoever you want, besides someone who taunts. Recommended roles. Please note, nothing is required here. It's just suggestions to let you have an easier time and build a solid team. As I go through these roles, the units I will highlight will be around this tier's release, but feel free to slot in whoever you feel appropriate. The first role is what I'm going to label as Damage Mitigation. Reduce incoming damage to give yourself some breathing room. This includes Brave and HP damage. As I mentioned before, please keep in mind this wave is Taunt Immune, so units who taunt will be significantly less effective. Units that fit this role nicely are Edward with his Attack Down and Brave Gain Prevention, Kefka with his super strong attack down and blind. Nine providing brave damage shields and HP damage mitigation for the entire party. And Kamari with attack down, party defense up, blind, and HP damage reduction. Older units who can similarly fit the bill are Leon, Desh, Aphmau, and Porum, for example. Someone who technically fits in here is Arden, and it's kind of a technicality, but he doesn't really care about HP damage so long as his overkill buff is up, and he can actually solo this tier, and HP damage does not really matter to him, so keep that in mind. The next role I'd recommend grabbing is Turn Disable. The HP attacks in this tier are actually pretty choreographed, so denying enemy actions can allow you to skate through with relative ease. Things that fall under this category are stuff like HP Silence, for example, Paralyze, or Sleep with Edward. Recent units that can handle this role are very obviously HP Silence with Kefka and Sleep with Edward, as I just mentioned. Older units, if you haven't burned them yet, would be Arciella, Desh, Eldnarsh, and Raijin. The last role I consider hitting is Damage, well, specifically AoE. Damage is important, and this fight is five waves and you need to take down all of them within the turn limit. While it isn't terribly tight, it's still important to get through it. All but the last wave have two or more enemies, and you will most efficiently cut them down if you use AoE damage dealers. These are fortunately a dime a dozen, so you can pick and choose pretty much who you want to bring here. Renoa, Arden, Kane, Kefka, Strago, Realm, Emperor, Nine, they all fit the bill and all work in this tier exceptionally well. And now that we've gone through the roles, it's time to go into the waves of the tier. The tier opens up with three lunatic ghost brothers. They resist dark and are weak to holy. This wave is pretty much a trash wave. They die pretty quickly. Uh, some things to note, they can inflict defense down and they do have a brave plus HP attack. So be careful if you're being targeted, but if you delete them fast enough, you probably won't see it. This is a familiar boss. They buff when one dies and when two are dead they get even stronger so try to kill them all at once otherwise this wave is pretty straightforward wave two two lunatic onk beasts who happen to be thunder weak these are the bosses from fran's event not to be confused with the ones from the lost chapter who function a little bit differently they do not instant break like in the lost chapter they are stronger when they're in the air having higher attack defense and m brave up 
They can also buff themselves with generic attack, defense, eye brave, and speed buffs. Additionally, they can debuff your defense and your speed. As long as they're broken while they're flying, they won't be a threat. They don't have any brave plus HP attacks in the air. However, on the ground, they do have a weak hit brave plus HP attack, but as long as you're being targeted, make sure not to get broken and you'll likely live through it. They do not enrage, so feel free to focus one down if you so choose. Overall, this is pretty much another simple wave. Wave three is the two Kum Kums, who are stone resist, and the brain pan in the middle, who is wholly weak. This is what I consider another quote unquote trash wave, as it also dies relatively fast, but it does have some mechanics to watch out for. The Kum Kum has a chance to instant break anyone it's targeting. It can also slightly battery the enemy party when it breaks you. Overall, this thing isn't very threatening, no deadly brave plus HP attacks, and it'll melt pretty quickly, assuming you damage it down. The brain pan in the middle, however, is a bit more interesting. When targeting all, it will do a brave gain into an HP attack that also inflicts three turns of eye brave down and one turn of doom on whoever it hits. It also does a single target magic attack that inflicts countdown, which is a three turn framed doom. Its mechanics are more of an annoyance than anything, but it's probably gonna make the next wave a little bit obnoxious, so just be aware of what you're gonna run into if you encounter it at all. Preventing the brain pan from debuffing you is probably the best way to proceed in this wave, but even if you do get debuffed, it's not a huge deal. Just know what you're up against. Wave two is two emirs, not to be confused with the reskin of them, on Amida's Hellions event. This wave is actually potentially tricky. I'm sure you don't remember these guys from the story chapter wherever they were, but they like to also, resembling the Amida Hellion boss, go into their shell and get a significant brave gain and defense up. They have two notable attacks that they can do in or out of the shell, but what's important to note is that after doing either of these two attacks, if they are in the shell, they will come out of it immediately. One is a brave attack that delays you one turn, along with inflicting turn rate down and speed down. Getting broken by this move and getting delayed and also getting inflicted with speed down and turn rate down can actually put you in a very unfortunate position, so manage your brave in turns correctly here. It also has a single target brave plus HP in which it recovers to I brave and then attacks you and inflicts speed down. Per usual again, don't get broken, blah blah, but just know that they can do these attacks. The debuffs here can really just get in the way of things and leave you in an undesirable turn position. Uh, instant break strategies, gravity strategies, uh, mitigating it any way possible, such as HP silence or sleep, is really the key to not getting screwed by this wave. That being said, even though their defense gets high, they don't have a crazy amount of HP, and they don't enrage. So getting through this, provided you manage their mechanics effectively, shouldn't be too tricky. And now we are at the final wave, wave 5. This time it's the Lunatic Demon Wall. Unlike the chapter this boss premiered in, there are no element or type resists. Just like the rest of the tier, you can't target lock it. The annoying Demon Wall things, however, are back and all up in your face. It can't be launched. It has the potential to petrify you with a single target attack. It can inflict generic defense and eye brave down. It can delay whoever it's targeting, single target, one turn. It has a single target brave plus HP attack that can remove your generic buffs. And it's recast, which it does a couple turns after the wave starts, is a brave gain into a brave plus HP attack that can be relatively devastating if you're not prepared. Per normal advice in this tier, and really the game in general, I keep saying, if you're being targeted, exercise caution and try not to get broken because there's some dangerous attacks that can one-shot you. You can't lock it this time, so keeping the attention off someone is going to be a bit more difficult. You need to manage the enemy's actions. Neutering the attacks is really the best way to go. Brave in HP damage reduction to lessen any attacks that are incoming. Uh, blind, sleep, HP silence, delay, delete, all that good stuff, just so you don't have to see any attacks. That's really going to be your best line of attack here. It is very possible with the right setup to not let this boss have any actions at all. 
it has actually deceptively low HP. So if you just let loose on whatever skills you have left, make sure you summon here. Uh, you might not even see its recast. If you do take some recasts, uh, brace for impact and be sure to heal back up right after. It'll be done before you know it. Now we're going to finish things off with my recommendations and top units for this tier around the time of release. My number one is definitely going to be Kefka. Oh, Kefka, getting his LD right when this thing drops. He's got HP silent to prevent anything dangerous. Uh, if you think you're in danger, just throw Kefka's skill one up and then you don't have to worry anymore. They are denied. He has extremely potent debuffs. I'm not going to rattle off the numbers. You can check the Tom Berry troop guide for that, but they're good. They're real good. On top of that utility, he just has great damage in general. He definitely will carry you through this tier without even thinking, just with his mechanics. It's fitting that he releases on the same time. My second MVP is definitely going to be Edward. He's got AoE damage. He can hide from single target attacks. Uh, sleep, oh man, sleep can provide you enemy turn manipulation to offset really any danger you might run into. And his brave gain prevention, assuming you can get to three stacks, which is a little difficult considering that there's five ways, but still possible, can still be a blessing. He has strong debuffs and has great auras to enable your team. Couldn't ask for a better unit. My next MVP is going to be Arden. Arden is special. He can actually solo this entire tier, provided I believe you have his burst. He doesn't care about HP damage, uh, and he has insane damage output. He has already spoken for himself at this moment, so I'm not going to go too deep into it, but he'll be a powerhouse here. He works AoE and single target for that last wave in the Demon Wall. And if you chain enough rebricks on the Demon Wall, that will help the team just never uh, let the Demon Wall have a turn. Good stuff. My last MVP for the stage is going to be Renoa. She is a hybrid healer and a damage dealer. She can deal single target brave shave, but she has splash. So she's immensely valuable on those multiple enemy boss waves. If you need to jump back to heals, she's got you there too. She is a jack of all trades and she does them all very well. She doesn't have any debuffs and she has only buffs for herself. So she fits in a lot of teams. Definitely consider bringing her here. For any other runs or things that I may have referenced or used as research for this tier, I'm going to be linking them in a card right here. Uh, please check that out if you want some other team examples. I didn't collect them all, but this is a good start. And that's all I got for you all. Thanks for watching. Like I asked earlier, please drop a like on the video, comment with your planned team, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Really hoping this pushes me over to 1K. Um, as for my team on this tier, uh, never mind. I said I wasn't even going to bother because I changed my mind constantly. Uh, I'm going to be running someone who will win. and you, <laughs> you all will see the video when it comes out. Trust me. Thank you to all the helpful resources we have in the community. Run with the City Database, O Tracker, Tomberry Troop, TCC, MacNoel, you know it. I hope this guide was helpful and informative. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.